everybody, Carl Schoof here from Snorkel.tv, and here's part three of the issues that I had when building my Twitter spitter. As a refresher, my Twitter spitter allows you to load a Twitter user's followers XML file, which will then tell you all the profile images of all that user's followers. Then what I can do is load in all those images, and they will come on screen. Um, and I started out by saying that this app took me like two or three hours to build and get it pretty much 95% solid, but then an additional 10 hours to get it to work really well in all situations. Um, so now what we're going to be talking about is what happens when you start loading assets from other domains into Flash. And this is actually kind of a rookie mistake, and I feel stupid for falling for it again. Um, what happens is when you're testing your apps locally in Flash, you can pretty much load anything from anywhere and there's no big deal. Um, but once you start hosting your SWIFT on a server and then you request assets from other servers or other domains, um, Flash's built-in security isn't going to allow that unless you have a few things in place. So I was real happy that my app was working and then as soon as I uploaded it to my server, boom, it blew up because Flash was not allowed to receive data from Twitter. I could not load the XML file from Twitter. So what I'm going to do is show you how in normal situations when you have control over the server that is hosting your Swift and the server that is hosting your data, you can put something called a cross-domain file in place which will allow your Swift access to data on other servers. We're also going to be talking about a PHP proxy script which will allow you to fake the Flash player into thinking that it's getting data from the same domain that the Swift is living on. So first things first, let's go over to Flash. And I have a very basic applet built here. Um, and all we're going to do is load a simple XML file. And to illustrate the problems that I had, I'm going to show you that this XML file that I'm loading, um, I'm loading it off of Snorkel TV. From my dev folder, there's an XML folder, and then there is message.xml. Okay, and this file is going to look like this. So let's just paste that URL in just to show you that I am loading in some XML from my server. It says this is a test, and if I go to inspect element, we'll be able to see how that XML is formatted. So all I want to do is load that one little XML file from my server. Now if we go into Flash, I'm using a GreenSock Loader Max XML Loader, which allows me to very easily specify what file I want to load, and in one line I can set up on complete callbacks and callbacks for security errors. Um, there's a whole bunch of different callbacks I can respond to, such as on fail, on error, on HTTP status, um, but right now I want to keep it lean and mean. So if this file loads, it's just going to say the XML is done loading, and we're going to actually see the content of that XML file. So when I'm testing locally, my local Swift can go out to snorkel.tv, I get the complete callback, and then I can also test, or I can see the actual contents of that XML file that's living on my server. It works great. Now what happens is when I go to upload this Swift, and load in that XML. If this Swift is on a different server, then I run into trouble. All right, so let's switch back over to Chrome, and what I'm going to do is load a page that contains that Swift. All right, so when I tested from Flash, everything loaded fine. But now I have this Swift living on do you have a pen.com trying to load the XML from snorkel.tv. And this is what I'm going to get. It says security error. It gives me the name of the loader. It tells me the URL that I'm trying to load, and it tells me the type of error that I have. Okay, so what's it saying here is, hey, you can't go from do you have a pen.com directly to this XML living on snorkel.tv. And the reason for that is that when we do this cross domain uh, data getting, um, the Swift looks on the server that hosts the data for something called a cross domain policy file. All right, and right now on snorkel.tv, I don't have one of these policy files in place. So what I'm going to do is show you that in Dreamweaver, all right, I've created a cross domain file and you will see here that this one that I'm going to put on snorkel TV that will allow access from www.doyouhaveapen.com. 
So when the Swift file loads up on doyouhaveapen.com and it goes to Snorkel TV, it's going to be looking for this file on snorkel.tv, which will grant the Swift access to Snorkel TV's data. All right, so I'm going to show you that doing that in real life. So let's go back to Chrome here, and you will see again that Do You Have a Pen is getting a security error trying to load from snorkel.tv. So let's go over to uh, my FTP client here, and I'm going to switch over to the files in snorkel.tv, and you'll see this is where the XML actually lives. And what I'm going to do is go to the root of this site here in public HTML, and in the root of my site at Snorkel TV, I'm going to put in, let's go to my finder here, I'm going to take cross domain and chuck it right here. So that little cross domain file now says, do you have a pen.com can access data on this site. So if we go back to Chrome, as soon as I refresh this now, there is no longer an error and I actually get my XML. So when requesting from one site to another site, um, the site hosting the data needs to have a cross-domain policy file in place that will grant access. Now, let's do this. Let's also do an inspect element, and we'll turn off that alarm, and let's pull this down, and I just want to show you that that actually happens. Let's go to network, and let's refresh this page and check it out. You'll see that um, we loaded in the HTML page, there's an alternate GIF, we don't have a Flash player, we've loaded in the Swift, but you will see that we've loaded from Snorkel TV this cross-domain policy file here. Okay, so the Swift said, hey, give me your cross-domain file and let me see if I have access to that data. Let's go to snorkel.tv slash cross-domain.xml and now you will see, if we do an inspect element here, that we are in fact allowing do you have a pen.com in. Now, if we try to load data from Twitter, watch this. If I go to twitter.com, www.twitter.com, and I look for their cross domain policy file, you will see that they have one but they are not allowing access from do you have a pen or from snorkel.tv. Only domains that include Twitter are allowed access from Flash. So when our Swifts try to get data from Twitter, they load this cross domain policy file and they find out, whoops, I'm not allowed in there. So the next thing we need to do is fool Flash into thinking it's getting its data from the same server in which the Swift is hosted on. And to do that, we're going to use something called a PHP proxy file. A PHP proxy file acts as an intermediary between our Swift file and the server that hosts the data that we're trying to get. So what I'm going to do is show you exactly how a PHP proxy script can allow us to redirect um, requests um, from Flash to an external server. And to do that, I'm going to go back to... Um, my server and I'm going to get rid of the cross domain policy file that I have there. I'm going to delete it. Okay. Um, and we'll go back to Chrome and let's look at our um, load XML. And you'll see now when I go back to this page and refresh it, it says security error. So it's not letting me in because what's happening is the Swift file is now looking for that cross domain policy file and it's not there. But what we want to do is fool Flash into thinking that it's loading data from the exact same server that the Swift is living on. And to do that, we're going to use one of these proxy files. And let me just show you um, that if you do a Google search for Flash PXP, PHP proxy, you'll get a lot of results. Um, and I had a lot of trouble with this because there are all these great resources giving you source code for PHP um, proxy files, and none of them would work and I'd go through five or six of them, they wouldn't work, wouldn't work, and every tutorial said, oh, this is easy, just do this. Well, the thing is, my host, HostGator, wasn't allowing these PHP proxies to run because I guess they don't want um, people fooling them into uh, you know, acting as a gateway to different servers and things of that sort. Well, the short story is I got in touch with HostGator and their support said, oh, no problem, we'll turn that on for you, no big deal. So I got it working and I was totally happy. 
Um, and so here is what one of these proxy files might look like. Now I don't know much of PHP at all, um, but basically what's happening is you're going to pass in the URL of where your data lives to this script and it's going to fetch that data and pass it back to Flash. That's the basic way this works. Um, and so here in this little chart that I have, um, here's a computer loading snorkel.tv, um, the website. Okay, and my Swift is living on do you have a pen right now? And it doesn't go directly to Twitter because there's no cross domain policy file allowing that. So I'm going to make a request to this PHP proxy file right here and then try to get my data out of Twitter. And in my little example here, I'm going to be loading data from Snorkel TV from a Swift on do you have a pen? So let's go back into Flash. And now we know that this Swift doesn't work, okay? Um, because in my actions, what's happening is when I try to go to Snorkel TV, there's no cross domain file anymore and I get shot down. So what I'm going to do is instead of going directly to that domain, I'm going to go to where my cross domain, I'm sorry, my PHP proxy file lives. And if we go to Dreamweaver, you'll see that I have this file here called twitter.php which includes all the PHP that I just copy and pasted off that site. I'll link that up in just a few minutes. And this Twitter PHP lives inside of, if we go to, do you have a pen, inside of my Twitter spitter folder, you'll see I have twitter.php, okay? So that's the file that I want to hit. And I'm just gonna go into Flash, I'm gonna go to the actual Twitter spitter source, and let's go here. And in my actions, we're just going to grab out that URL. So this is where the PHP file lives, okay? So let's just copy that. And I'm gonna go back to my load XML. And so watch this. We'll go here. And instead of, again, requesting my data directly from Snorkel TV, I'm gonna say, go to doyouhaveapen.com slash dev slash Twitter spitter slash twitter.php and I'm going to say that the URL that I'm requesting is going to be equal to something on Snorkel TV. So what's happening here is the Swift thinks it's getting its data from do you have a pen.com but that PHP page is passing on or getting the data for me from Snorkel TV. So the PHP page acts as a middleman. So let me just save this. Let me test it out. It's going to work just fine. All right, I'm gonna take that same Swift. We're gonna go back to, do you have a pen? And just to show you real quick, just to make sure everything is perfectly clear, right now, I'm getting the security error, okay? Let's go back to Firefox. We'll go to my finder, and I'm going to take, now, my new Swift. We're gonna replace the old one, I'm sorry, in load XML. And we'll take load XML, drop it in here, hit overwrite. There we go, and now when I go to reload this Swift here, you'll see that it works. We get no security error. Oh, but we did. Well, you know what? I think in this case, we're gonna have to dump my uh, cache. So let's just go, it's gonna happen to you too. So let's just go to clear our browsing data, and let's just empty the cache, clear browsing data, go back, and then refresh, and there we go. XML loading is complete. So it looks like that cross domain file and some other stuff might have been cached. So now I'm going from do you have a pen and loading that data from Snorkel TV, which doesn't have a cross domain XML file, but I am fooling the Flash player into thinking that I am making a request from do you have a pen because that's where that PHP file lives. All right. Um, and next, what I'm going to do is talk to you about the Twitter rate limit which really gave me trouble. Thanks for watching. The next one is right around the corner.